So far, we've shared how Flutter has grown from an experiment to a production-grade app framework. We enable development teams behind some of the world's biggest apps and brands with a first-class developer experience and help them focus the resources they have on delivering amazing user experiences across all platforms with great performance. But there's one more thing, uh, or actually a number of things. As we move forward in Fada's production era, it's essential that we continue to make developers more productive in delivering even higher quality apps. Each year, we publish a roadmap that defines where the framework is headed. So here's three things that I'm especially enthusiastic about in Fada's future. Uh, but first a note, uh, just like a band, we do a lot of jamming on new ideas in the Fada team, you know, throwing riffs around, uh, building up drum beats, testing out lyrics. And while some of that hits tape and maybe even ends up on an album, it's an inherent part of the ideation process that some ideas fail. So as I tease some of these items from the lab, please keep in mind that some of this will probably turn out to not really work. And some of it will end up looking quite different by the time it hits the radio waves, or in our case, the stable channel. Kate talked about helping teams craft innovative apps across the broad ecosystem of devices out there. Andrew and Rivers shared in the opening that more than one in four apps in Apple's App Store use Flutter. Quite impressive, I think. Let's look at our plans for supporting developers who are shipping apps to iOS. We're giving our Cupertino widgets, which match Apple's design language and specifications, a massive overhaul with new features and functionality so that users on iOS will feel right at home. We're also upgrading the framework to recent Apple ecosystem standards, such as replacing CocoaPods with Swift Package Manager. It's our vision that Flutter enables everything you can do in Swift UI, but while still allowing you to deploy your app to all the platforms and devices that your customers use. We're also investing in tooling improvements. To enable teams to iterate even faster, we're designing a live widget previewer. This lives right in the IDE and can render individual widgets without needing to run the whole app. We're also investigating support for visual editing of widget properties, again directly from the previewer. We believe this improves productivity, makes UI development even more approachable, and will blur the lines between developers, designers, and product managers. Of course, interesting apps do a lot more than just painting pixels. They need to take advantage of the APIs and services available on the host platform. Today, this either means finding a ready-made package on our pub repository, or writing cumbersome host bridging code using platform channels. We're investing a lot in a new approach for this, which we call direct native interop. Our vision is to enable a simple and seamless mechanism for calling into platform native APIs directly from Dart, whether the APIs are in C, Swift, or Kotlin. Uh, say, for example, you want to prompt a user on Android to authenticate with a biometric, such as face or fingerprint recognition. With direct native interop, you can write Dart code that calls directly into the Android X APIs. All the underlying Dart classes for mapping the host biometric APIs to Dart would be handled automatically. The local auth plugin already supports biometric authentication, but say this is a new API that's being introduced and we haven't yet done the work to build up these plugins. With direct native interop, you can write this Dart code from day one by calling directly into the APIs. There is still a lot of work to validate that this approach will work end to end, but we're making progress and are actively testing it by porting some of our own plugins. We're hopeful that this can deliver a step change in productivity when it comes to platform interop. We're also dedicated to maximizing developer productivity, so we're exploring a few new ideas to make Flutter code quicker to write and easier to read. First up, we're prototyping what we call decorators. These are API shorthands for styling your widgets, for example, to specify alignment or colors. The code example shows three concise method calls that decorate a button by adding some padding, 
a blue border and centered alignment. We're also exploring a number of other DART features. These include enum shorthands, which abbreviate a bunch of common Flutter code patterns where enum types are repeated in the API calls, such as when setting alignment, and primary constructors, which drastically reduce the overhead of defining smaller classes, for example, a point data class. As I mentioned, these are just a few examples. We're exploring dozens of other potential improvements in this space. It's been a long and exciting journey for the Flutter project. We continue to do our best to revolutionize multi-platform app development, to making developers and teams an order of magnitude more productive, and to disprove theories that multi-platform frameworks imply lower app quality. We've now reached Flutter's production era, and we have a deep and nuanced focus on supporting the millions of developers and teams that deliver mission-critical apps to users across the globe. We've seen a tremendous ecosystem growing around Flutter, and I'd like to personally express my gratitude and appreciation for all the members and contributors of this vibrant ecosystem. We could not have done this without you. If you're not already using Flutter, we'd love to see you join us too. And we could not be more excited about the future. <laughs>